Hey guys, All in Crypto here and welcome back ladies and gents for another YouTube video. I hope you've all had a wonderful Wednesday so far. Today we're going to be diving into our daily cryptocurrency market update and it's a big day today not just for crypto but for markets across the board as today is the day we're going to get a definitive answer on the Fed's decision um, to either up interest rates, leave them where they are, uh, and to up them by just how much, which I think is really the real question at the moment. Although the overall consensus is 25 basis points. And I think that's on the back end of the fact that the economy isn't looking too good and too much of a um, unmeasured approach would be somewhat catastrophic for markets at the other end. So we know that markets have typically been pricing in this interest rate or a number of interest rate hikes. Um, but it's really, you know, this could be a market turning moment. If the Fed today come out and essentially say that they are going to, they act dovish and not hawkishly, and by dovishly I mean sort of sheepish, they, they, they don't really want to um, be brave and really up the interest rates by half a percent or, you know, three quarters of a percent and really go for that 25% option like people are speculating. Markets may do quite well within this, um, given the fact that, you know, typically interest rates cause a restricting economy so they cause the they essentially cause people to become less flush money becomes a little bit more expensive to borrow people are somewhat more cautious about borrowing it given the increase in interest rate rises and this often doesn't get through to um, markets and, and the economy generally so the reason that, that and that is the really the reason that they're upping interest rate rights uh, interest rates to tackle inflation which is running rampant at the moment and i would argue that they are absolutely 100 percent going to up interest rates because they need to essentially bring them back down again. You know, that's really one of the only tools they have in their arsenal um, in regards to tackling inflation. And where do we go from pretty much zero? They're going to have to up them only to bring them back down at another point. And this is why Bitcoin is still extremely relevant. Bitcoin has a unique feature, even though right now it's very correlated with the likes of your NASDAQ and some of your risk um, on and off assets or more uh, risk on assets uh, or risk off assets, sorry um you know it does have something that a lot of these don't and that is that it is supposed to be a system of its own it's supposed to be a monetary system a value system that is fair and untethered to any one government but of course we know we have a lot of the same actors within the crypto space that we have in traditional markets and that's why i would argue there's a correlation and what we've seen during this sort of downtrend is essentially um people vacate the market you know this is quite controlled selling Whereas this was essentially disastrous, fear-driven and capitulation. Um, and of course, you were going to get a return move out of that. And um, whereas this is more people strategically exiting the market, given the current market environment. So it is certainly interesting. The, crypto's already, the crypto market's already started to see a bit of a pump to the upside, given people's speculation on this. You know, people are sort of positioning themselves for whatever comes from the Fed meeting. And like I say, we pretty much know that it's probably going to be 25 basis points, which is only a quarter of a percent um which could potentially it's it, trying to you know the, the markets often i mean for example when we have the inflationary figures a lot the last couple of times we've had the inflationary figures and they've come out at new all-time highs bitcoin's actually gone the opposite way even though it is really an inhation uh, um an inflation hedge so it's interesting but there is definitely the potential that you know for example if they came out and did a 75 basis point rate hike which i don't think they're going to do that would typically be quite bad for markets and show that the Fed are really serious and cause a little bit more fear into markets. But if they come out with a 25% rate, rate hike, which is sort of low ball what we were maybe expecting, um, you could see markets absolutely, um, or you could see markets respond very positively to it. Certainly we know the NASDAQ, coincidentally with Bitcoin uh, and a number of other risk on assets actually did quite well yesterday in the run up to this. So do they know something? Um, remember there are it's amazing how many people before these geopolitical events actually kicked off that work within governments around the world went long your oil and war stocks, your commodities and war stocks. And um, that's quite a shocking figure when you find that out. But that's the world we live in. We've got to deal with it accordingly. So, of course, this is really what we're watching today. European markets open higher ahead of Fed decision. I personally think Europe's in for a the European economy, in my opinion, is in for a nightmare over the next six months for a number of reasons that we'll move on to um, in just a second. But, um, you know, the big story today, of course, is going to be the FOMC, the Fed's meeting. Uh, Bitcoin consolidation likely to end by huge move following FOMC meeting. It's not likely. Um, one thing that you'll notice with, and this isn't an attack on whoever wrote this article, but 
you know, it's it's not likely. Nothing in this market is likely. Yesterday, the crypto market actually got a bit of a pump. The amount of people on Twitter that were getting overly excited, you know, we were extremely bullish and, you know, getting very excited every time there was a kind of move like this during what was clearly a violent uptrend. So here you could be every time there's a pump. Okay, it's going now, guys, because we were in an uptrend. In a downtrend that's caused largely by geopolitical events and a number of other things, you know, macroeconomics, monetary policy, you know, uncertainty across the board, those kind of get excited every pump rules just really go out the window because you can't, you know, and we've seen that currently. But there is definitely this sort of consolidation that's going on for Bitcoin here, which is typically, um, typically you're going to break this to the upside. I would say, but it doesn't have to happen. And remember, when we're trying to trade geopolitical events, like Raoul Paul said, don't even bother. Um, that's why we are ultimately, my position is long on a macro sense. So I don't have perpetual futures open at the moment. I don't really believe in trading these kind of choppy markets. You can do a bit of range trading, but it is risky. Um, and you're going to get quite, you're going to get more of it wrong during, some traders love this kind of, these kind of markets. Um, but for me, it's not really a, a market that I'm trying to trade. I'm more my net position is long because I believe in blockchain and the wonders um, that it's going to bring to the world. So this is obviously the main story. Yesterday, we looked at the possibility for a recession. Uh, and it does seem like we have all the factors of a recession at hand. Interest rate hikes, so monetary tightening. Um, we also have commodity prices going through the roof, oil being a big one big driver everybody uses oil or a lot of people use petrol diesel whatever to get to and from work they're now having to pay the cost of that and their wages haven't um made up for it along with a number of other commodities foods likely to get more expensive and a number of other things um and then of course you have war which is these are all drivers for a recession and we've got all three right now so it does look very likely um it could be a very short recession and it could be one of the shortest sort of regimes of monetary tightening that we've ever seen, because what they're probably going to do is tighten, 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 you know, incrementally go up and try and do this kind of smooth 1970s landing. And then they kind of go, oh, something's just broke there. We're going to have to backtrack. Um, and that's why, honestly, the reason I think they're upping interest rates is only to undo them later on down the line. You know, this is a game, a proliferation game of the monetary system that we're playing. If you were the Federal Reserve, if you were the US government and you owed $30 trillion in debt, you would have a vested interest in deflating that debt, uh, um, inflating that debt away, if that makes sense. Well, it's kind of deflating. Um, so you've got to think about this. There's always people get very drawn into the small picture, but what you need to do, uh, and it's, uh, how do I say this, is, is come up with a, a bigger picture strategy. Try and understand what government's agendas are, what monetary policy agenda is and has been and where it's going. And then markets will make a lot more sense because there are periods where markets you know, March 2020 saw a huge amount of stimulus, or essentially Jerome Powell's own words, the Federal Reserve and a number of other central banks flood the system with money. We're at the back end of that now. But ultimately, you know, I'm very confident that crypto sees that continuation and crypto goes a lot higher than it currently is. $1.7 trillion is nothing, ladies and gentlemen, in the world that we currently live. We literally have monopoly money. Now, I wish I had $1.7 trillion. Um, it is a lot of money, but it's in the grand scheme of things, relative, it's not. Um, so let's move on. Yesterday, we spoke about the recession. Russia could be about to default on its debt. This goes back into why I think Europe's in trouble. I think Europe's in trouble for a number of reasons. I think the euro, when we see a lot of dollar strength on the dollar uh, currency index, a lot of that comes from the euro. Um, you got to remember the index is made up against a number of different currencies. So some currencies are doing actually quite well against the dollar. Others like the euro aren't doing too brilliantly. Um, and I think the euro could be in a bit of trouble and it has a lot to do with the whole Russia situation currently. Germany are so dependent on Russia's gas and, and, and oil in some cases that they're really going to suffer at the hands of this. Um, you've got, here's an article that says Russia could be about to default on its debt. Here's what you need to know. International sanctions on Central Bank of Russia in response to uh, the innovation of Ukraine have blocked off a substantial portion of the country's foreign exchange reserves. The Russian state is due to pay $117 million in interest on two sovereign euro bonds on Wednesday, the first of four payment dates uh, to creditors in March alone. Failure to pay would mark Russia's first sovereign debt default since 1998. You better get used to it, guys. Uh, when it defaults on domestic debt, 
and the first sovereign default on foreign currency debt since the Bolshevik Revolution in 1918. This is going to be this is a lot more significant than I think people are actually giving it credit for. Um, because if they start defaulting, it's going to show they've really got no intentions of paying or they can't pay given the sanctions that have been levied upon them. Probably quite likely, given everything that's happened. Um, and it's always things always seem like a good idea at the time, and then you kind of realize what the fallout of them may be. And I think that's kind of what's going on with the Russian situation right now. I think it's an awful situation. At the end of the day, guys, whenever there's um, lives being lost, every single life on this earth is precious. Otherwise, it wouldn't be here. Um, yes, we may think some people are idiots and have a grudge against certain individuals, but you know we're all human. And it, it, you know it, it, when we talk about crypto, we talk about money, we talk about a number of things. These things do matter to us. Um, it's the way the kind of system works nowadays. You know, people. Good luck living on a very small amount of money. I've had to do it, um, and your life is typically better when you have more of it. Doesn't mean you're going to be happy or anything like that. But when you have people that's you know, time is the most important thing. And when that gets taken away from you, it's it, it's, a, it's a tragedy. And that's what's going on right now. But there's there's repercussions and, and, and of course, um, two sides to every single story. But that's really what I'm going to say on that. You've also got this dwelling. So I'll let you guys read this. The potential consensus of a new China something something um, shut down. Could you imagine if we end up with one of these in the in the West again? I mean, on top of everything that's going on, goodbye economy, goodbye markets. You know, let's hope it doesn't get to that. I don't think it will, but it's certainly something. You know, again, two sides to the story in regards to this. Um, but you know, it's certainly something that we've we've already ended up in one total shutdown, which caused markets to do this. Could we end up in another? I mean, there is always the potential for that. It's kind of that whole thing's gone to the backdrop now, given you know this is something new to talk about. Um, but it, it's certainly very uncertain times and markets reflect that. And it's something to absolutely come to terms with because you've got these guys on Twitter that it, some of them got over a hundred thousand followers. They're idiots, man. I mean, seriously, it's like, you know, you, you can tell that they, anyway, I don't want to be too, I don't want to be too harsh, but every single time it's a pump, it's like, you know, here we go. And, uh, you know, there was a time for that back here where you could get those calls largely right here is not necessarily the time for calling every pump as a major breakout, I don't think. And I think you need to have a sort of level head going forward and really get a good grasp, a good grip of what's taking place on a macro scale and everything that's going on within that. So that's really all I have for you in this video, guys. I'm going to love and leave you on that note. If you have enjoyed this content, a like is always appreciated. So is a comment. It's going to be interesting to see how things play out. Again, a dovish Fed may see um, crypto continue, which is something we all want, we all hope for. Um, but it could also not. But one thing you always have to remember, even though things are doom and gloom and very, you know, uncertain at the moment, just remember where crypto is going, guys. You know, if you look at this chart linearly, you can see, take it off log. We won't take it off log, actually. It's only going one way, guys, and that is up, um, in my opinion. Um, and, and it's really, you know, Bitcoin. Satoshi must have been the biggest genius ever. Um, you know, he, he's got this so right um in regards to you know he really created bitcoin on the back end of bank bailouts and, and then really destroying people with inflation and, and ruining the economy i mean he's predicted everything that's happened to it too so yeah all i have for you in the video guys i'm going to love and leave you on that note enjoy the rest of your wednesdays and i'll catch you in the next youtube video thanks a lot for watching ladies and gents